Hi! Uh, to quote Bob Ross, I believe there's an artist in every single one of us. I'm going to find out if there's one in me today. Let's fake some patina. Let's go. So before I go ahead and spray that color down, you can see kind of the difference between these two panels. It's because I did a Comet wash on this one when I first got the car, the, the famous David Freiberger Comet wash. Uh, this has like a lot of rust and these rust specks and stuff in here. That will take care of a lot of this. So I think that's what I kind of want to do. I want to take care of the color that is there right now and just basically give it that Comet wash. I'm basically using the blue like scotch Bright pads, like literally regular Comet. I'm gonna fill this up with some hot water and I'm gonna use this sprayer. It just has regular water in it. You could probably put a little bit of dish soap in there if you wanted to make it more lubricated up, but that will take a lot of the scaling and, and the roughness away from this and just kind of help smooth it out as well. So when I spray um, that green on there, it will definitely help stick. I mean, I am going to go over it with like a red scotch bright and stuff like that, but I just want to get at least these colors to match this right now. So I got a good foundation to start off of. So that's just what I'm going to start out with. What that does is it just really cleans up the paint. I mean, it feels nice and smooth now. All those like little rust specks are gone, which I really like. It blends in with this color a little bit more. If I was to buff on this the way I buffed on this to create um, a little bit more exposure of the undercoating or the, um, the red oxide primer, it would look exactly the same. But yeah, this feels nice. It's got a nice transition here now. And yeah, it just, it just gets rid of the rust rust, but leaves raw metal. So this is just, it might come off as kind of rusty looking on camera, but it's, it's like blackish instead of um, the orange that you would get with regular rust. If we compare it to the other side. Yeah, you can see how crazy rust spec this is. That gets rid of all of this garbage. Um, I just don't think that that looks good. Obviously that looks a lot better, but it just gives us a good foundation to spray on to. We'll get rid of all this. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna continue doing what I was doing. I need to do this top surface, obviously this side and that door. And once I'm done with that, we'll go over uh, color and then prep these surfaces in order to spray the green on. I am just about done with the Comet wash. You can see how much better this looks. How much smoother it looks. See all those rust, those rust flecks and stuff are gone. Um, I did half the sail panel, and this is just a good example of what it does. So you can see how nice and clean the paint is. All the rust specks are gone. I like that look a lot, but this still has all the rust specks. So I literally just have this little section to do, and then we can move on to prepping everything for paint. So realistically, I probably should go over it and wash it again, like with dish soap, just to get all the, a little bit of residue that's still on there, but I'm not gonna, and I'm probably gonna regret it. It's gonna have some kind of weird chemical reaction to the paint, but it shouldn't. Um, at least I don't think so. God, this is looking so good. I'm really excited. Um, paint prep. So I'm just gonna wipe it down with some wax and grease remover. Got some blue shop towels. Basically all the areas that I know I need to prep for paint. And once I get that done, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a fresh red Scotch-Brite. Kind of just feather it in um, into the paint right there because that's the plan. I just, I just want to lightly spray on the green to just fill in the areas that are basically not, you know, the patina. So, yeah, let me, uh, let me wipe it down here a minute and then I'll catch you up to speed. Got it all cleaned up and wiped down really good. I'm not going to do any masking on this whatsoever. Um, I think that I can just kind of 
contain it and I'll just use like a piece of cardboard to kind of like mask off where I am spraying if I need to mask it off. And here, here's the color. Check this out. So I went to my buddy's paint shop and um, I do car interiors by trade. So mixing up color to match dyes isn't any big deal for me. So he just said, have at it. And this is the color I came up with. I basically took a panel um, there and went and just mixed up some color until I was satisfied with the way that this came out. It's pretty thick, so I got some thinner here too. I'm gonna put it in a cup. Um, I've got my SATA. It's a very expensive gun, but this is what I'm gonna use small so I can control it because this is what I use for dye. So this is what I'm most comfortable with. Um, I, I've never done this before, so I don't know how well this is going to work, but I'm fairly confident that I can get, get it on. You know, and uh, well, we'll see how well I can control the spray and everything like that. So, um, yeah, let me just mix these two up and just start spraying it on the car. So I did kind of a medium wet coat, just one, just to kind of cover up everything that I had going on. It's a little off on the shade, but I mean, because of how much fade we got going on, I think I, I mean, I can work with it. I gotta work with it. So, um, yeah, and I'm, it's actually doing, maybe I didn't give it enough time for the wax and grease remover to kind of evaporate, but it's doing a little, a little something weird on me. Don't know if I like it. It might actually play to my benefit and make it the paint crackle to kind of match up here and stuff like that. But honestly, I'm not feeling good about that. But I'm going to give this another 15 minutes to flash. And I might actually kind of play with this a little bit here and see what it does. And then go ahead and spray it again. But hey, I mean, it's, it's green again. Check out the other side. The other side isn't doing it nearly as much, but. Definitely something we can play with in order to get that patina looking right. So yeah, I just kind of went it over with a scotch bright after I let it flash dry and I, it's gonna play into my benefit for sure. Like it just gives it a nice texture like the rest of it up here. Um, so yeah, I'm not upset about it at all. It actually kind of worked out. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do another coat. Maybe bring this up a little bit more in order to have it blend in more on this line. And then when I wet sand that down, it'll, it'll look a little bit more even, a little more even there. Yeah, let's, uh, let's lay the second coat on there. I'm not going to lie. I'm really pleased with the color match that I did here. Um, I think that once I start to wet sand this through and make it a little bit more dull like this, because you can kind of see the red kind of coming through here and here, which makes it look a little bit different shade. I think that this is going to match <laughs> so nice. Get that patina kind of showing up here. This, this crackle effect here. Once you start sanding on that, it'll match all this up here. So that was a... That was a pleasant mistake. Um, yeah, you can see the, the crackling on top of here too. Oh yeah, nice. So I'm gonna give this till tomorrow to really dry set up. And then I'm gonna start wet sanding on it in order to expose the red oxide from underneath there. Heck yeah. So cool. It's green again. 
yeah, let's uh, let's pick this up tomorrow. Uh, I think this is where the fun part comes in. So the car kind of is already telling me what it wants in order to match. You can see it's just the green is faded to expose the red. On the high spots with the sun coming down, obviously this is like where the guy's arm was out the window or whatever. But that's just kind of what I got to copy, you know. Just make it, make that, but here. And then we'll do the finer details of all the like little specks and stuff and the chips and dents and scratches and stuff like that to more to more blended and better. But for now, I just want to get the green looking faded like everything else. I basically just picked up a package of wet sand paper sheets. Um, I'm going to start with 400 grit and depending on how aggressive that is, work my way either up or down. I have a block, even though I don't think I'm gonna use it, I'm just gonna use my hand, but not put as much pressure on it so you don't get like finger marks or anything like that because this is a, a lot of compound surfaces on here. And then I just have some hot water. And then in my sprayer, I got some hot water with a little bit of dish soap in there to help uh, lubrication. So just wanna keep it wet the, the whole time. Just go to town. This is turning out pretty good. Um, it's a little bit glossier, I guess, sheenier than the original stuff, but I mean, looking at it wise, it just, I think it fits pretty well. Um, I can still, I can see the transition here um, between the new paint and the old paint, which I don't know, not much I can really do about it. Maybe I might like light spray in the green again to kind of like mist it over in order to have it blend a little bit better. Um, because it's more of a hard line here. I'm gonna have to think about that a minute, but also this is almost too perfect um, the way it's it's only sanded. But if you look at the door, you know, there's nicks and scratches and stuff like that. And there's a huge scratch dent here, but it's covered up in paint. So I think um, in order to try to hide it better, I'm gonna take a screwdriver to this thing and just kind of like, nick away at it here and there in order to create uh what what's here in order to make it look look a little bit more authentic um because i just i don't know i just want to this is just arts and crafts and i'm just trying to match it so yeah let's let's take a screwdriver to it so the car kind of had a little bit of a weird chemical reaction when i sprayed it which i don't really mind because they look like scratches but these were filled in with green and i'm just taking a screwdriver and i'm i'm flaking them out because they're low spots. They shouldn't be green. They should be like black. So it actually comes off pretty easily. And then I'm gonna go back through with a paintbrush and just kind of like soak in the black and then sand over it again. I think that'll give it the effect that I want in order to make it look a little bit more real. I know a lot of people are probably cringing right now, like, what are you doing? Scratching up your car. It's fine, it's not yours. There's that big one there. I think I wanna use a big screwdriver for this, but let's see. Yeah, so that's the gist of it. I'm just gonna continue going around and playing playing fake it. All right, I'm satisfied with like how far down I took it on this side. I think it matches really nice. Um, <laughs> I took a, a Phillips screwdriver and just basically went ga, 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 all along here to um, imitate like stone chips and stuff like that. And then I sanded it smooth after that. Yeah, this is really cool because these cars never came without the shields and the trim here. Yeah, so I don't, 
it really bothers me that transition but there's nothing i can really do about it you know i might play around with the paint like i said earlier but um i guess we'll see but this is yeah no i like this this is fine this is fine um let's move on over to the other side side is looking really good i like it a lot um i don't know why but for some reason whatever the sun did it bleached this side more than it did this side so i just kind of went a little bit lighter on that fender comparably to that fender um it's looking really good though so when i'm wet sanding loosely hold it small circles and then i went from 600 grit 800 up to a thousand and then I went back all over again with a red scotch bright pad to knock some of that sheen down. Oh, it's looking really freaking good. Next up, I want to kind of like um, recreate some rust. And that's kind of what I did here. I just basically, well, my plan, original plan, was to use this stuff. Um, Autumn Brown works really good because it's like a texture. As you can see, it's, it's a dead can. Like, it's full, but junk. Um, so I'm basically just taking my Rust Primer Brown and some black, and I'm going so quick, like, and just kind of touching it. And when I let this dry, I'm going to go back over it with a scotch Bright pad and knock most of it down, but it just kind of gives it that, that blackish, uh, brownish hue. So when you're kind of standing back, it just kind of looks natural. Yeah, so I'm gonna finish that up, let that dry, scuff that back. I am so pleased with the results that I got going on here. I think it matches quite well. The green is a little off, but man, like, ugh, it's a nice solid car again. It's got a custom touch because, you know, these things had the trim all here and now this one doesn't. So someone might be questioning it, you know, and be like, hey, where did the where did the trim go? You know, was it like that? I, I don't know. I just, I think I did a pretty dang good job about blending all that in. So um, the green though, and all that other top coat stuff, it's meant to, it needs a clear coat because it's not a single stage like the rest of the car is. <coughs> Excuse me <coughs> as I die. Um, picked up some of this wheel matte. I want it to be matte finish. And I'm just going to like kind of coat all the areas over that I know that I did the green on to kind of give it a fighting chance so it doesn't like UV completely bleach out. And then I will treat the paint later. But for now, to wrap this up, just gonna spray on a little clear coat. Call it good. That looks, ah, it looks so good. So a little trick I like to do, make sure that your clear, when you do this, is really like warm and atomized. It gives you a lot more consistent spray, like a finer spray, and it doesn't look clumpy or anything like that, and it goes on a little bit thinner. Um, I like doing that a lot better than, if you try to spray this stuff cold, it just gets like dotty and like, kind of looks fisheye-ish, but uh, yeah. So heat this up. Right on. There we have it. The matte clear is on. One can gave me two coats, 
on all the areas that I needed to do. Looks great. I like it. I like it a lot. That's just, that's, that's my way of doing it. Do it. Go out there and do it on your own car. If you got something going on like this, I kind of wish I would do like the whole car. So all of the green matches, but it, it matches close enough. Um, I'm, I'm really digging it. I'm really glad that this was done. This was a lot of fun for me just to create that and to make um, paint look 70 years old again. So yeah, thanks again for watching guys. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. We got a lot more coming up with the car. We'll see you on the next one.